always good to get around the guys and uh, you know get to get to know the guys because you know we come to a new team, you know I mean, everybody's new, you know so you gotta build relationships and and you know trying to create that uh, camaraderie that allows us to be successful. So you know it's exciting. First time, kind of uh, obviously working with new defensive coordinator Brian Nielsen. What have kind of, I know it's been short, but so far, kind of what's been your first impressions of him? He's a very impressive guy. You know, um, loves ball. You know, very um, you know particular about technique and how to be successful because he studies it. You know, he's had a lot of success, and um, you know, and I think that uh, it's going to allow us to really improve. And you know, uh, I mean, he has a lot of weapons at his disposal, and uh, you know, I feel like our defense will be really good this year. Calais, clearly you liked the conversations that you had enough with this coaching staff to want to come here this year. But now that you've been around some of the team and some of the coaches, what's the vibe like? How much do you like it? It's a great environment. You know, uh, I think there's a lot of a lot of guys that are hungry. You know, I think that's like the biggest thing is like, you know, I mean, you see a lot of potential and everything, you know, but it really comes down to like, are the guys willing to work, put the work in to kind of be the best they can be, you know, the best version of themselves. And all of us as a whole, you know, can, you know, can we, you know, put the work in to kind of really improve? And I like, I like the structure of the practice, the way we do things, and allows for us to all kind of improve on things and work with each other. And you know, I mean, we work hard, you know, that's for sure, you know. But it's efficient, it's quality work, and you know, I'm really, I'm really excited about this year. You know, the coaching staff is, is great. You know, they really, uh, you know, they, 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 I feel like the game plans are going to be really good based off our scheme. And uh, you know, I mean, uh, it's fun to go out there and compete. You know, I mean, you can only do so much this time of year, but you just see the. The, the drive, the work ethic, you know, and that's the important part. You said a lot of guys are hungry. How much do you enjoy getting to bring them along and bring them up to speed? Oh, that's a big part of it, you know, I mean, uh, sharing knowledge, you know, I mean, 15 years, a long time, you know, and I've accumulated a lot of knowledge doing that, you know, and in all, in all facets too, you know, like on the field, off the field, and, um, and you know, <laughs> pretty much every position I could get some kind of advice, you know, uh, you know, but D-line especially, you know, some of the young guys, you see a lot of potential in them, and it's like I can't help myself, and I got to, you know, give my two cents. I let the, let the coaches coach, of course, but, you know, I mean, I, I, would be, uh, I would be myself if I didn't, you know, speak up and, like, help guys where I could, and, uh, you know, I mean, it's only been a couple of days, but, you know, I, I, I really enjoy, you know, trying to, like, just love on guys and help them develop and be the best they can be. So, when you so first I, got started, you talked about how you know, big, how big it was for you to you know, be playing at the defensive end spot. Why, why was that? Why, why was it so important to you for you to line up at the defensive end, not you know, slide down the defensive tackle? You talked about the 15 years. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. guys slide down inside. So why was it so important for you to you know, be, that be part of one of your things? For yeah, I think the uh, first thing, I think I'm going to be the most productive there. You know, I can, I can help the team win the most there, in my opinion. You know, um, I feel like, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a football player. You put me anywhere, I'm going to go out there and, you know, give my best and, and probably do a really good job. Um, you know, maybe not safety, but <laughs> corner or something like that. But, you know, in, in that front seven, I feel like I could be effective, you know. Uh, you know, Someone covers going the goal line, right? You know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, but, you know, on the football field, I feel like, you know, uh, defensive end is, you know, I feel like I'm going to be the most dominant, you know. But I do a really good job inside, you know, so I understand why coaches put me in there because I mean, you can find other guys that can be outside and do a good job too. So I feel like it's harder to find that interior guys. But here, you know, they have, you know, really, really good interior guys already, you know. And so, um, you know, it allows me to be on the outside and, you know, go out there and uh, make my presence felt. And we got, we got a great D-line, you know. You see a lot of veterans, uh, you know, a lot of talented young guys with potential. And, uh, you know, we work, you know, so. I think it's going to be good work. I would want it. Lot, it seems like it's a little bit more established, you know, with guys, you know, maybe have to fill in one spot. But how do you feel like your defensive line going to be able to come together? Because Zach Harrison talked about how important it was for, to, for you to, you know, to talk with you and about and to be able to pick your brain. How do you feel like the defensive line is going to be able to come together, you know, being that, hey, there's a lot of slots that, you know, you don't necessarily know how many snaps everybody's going to be playing. Yeah, I mean, it's football, you know, we're figuring out, you know, uh, you know, I mean, it's good to have a lot of, a lot of weapons, you know, and, uh, you know, I think uh, we built up that bond, you know, we go out there and we sell out every play and we, you know, you exhaust yourself on the football field and, you know, rotate and uh, we all make plays and there's enough to go around, you know. Uh, you know, and obviously after having a year under my belt going through a full season and a full off season, uh, you know, it's become a lot more comfortable. Um, and, you know, now we're just trying to work the, the intricate de details of it, excuse me, just working the ins and outs and knowing the exact whys of why everything is going on. Um, and like I said, now, you know, having a year, it's slowed down tremendous. Um, and, you know, now it's just about executing. It's not like you're learning a ton of new guys at this point, but there are a lot of new faces in here, and you're finally getting to get some work in with them. How good has that been? Oh, it's been great. Um, you know, obviously the guys that have came in have done a tremendous job of, of coming in and, and learning the offense and, 
uh, just, you know, coming up to speed, just, just going out there and playing. Uh, you know, yesterday Bijan had a mistake. Um, you know, I went up and told him, I just said, hey, you know, just like college, even though you make a mistake during the play, just finish it, finish, go full speed. Um, so that's what you see out of all these guys out here is, you know, we just finish, we just compete. Um, you know, that's what we want as a team. I know you've been vocal in the past, but now that you are the leader, you know, going into OTAs and everything, does it change a little bit for you? Do you take more of that responsibility? No, I mean, you know, I'm just doing what comes natural to me. Um, you know, nothing's forced. It's just, you know, however it comes out for me. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's loud, sometimes it's not. Um, sometimes it's just real quiet off to the side, and then sometimes you'll see me out there, you know, talking to the defense, talking to whoever. Um, and, and so, you know, that's just who I am. First impressions of Bijan or what? Yeah, um, obviously a great guy, um, you know, just a person as a person. A uh, great football player. He's obviously came out here, like I said, you know, this time last year my head was spinning. This time now for him, his head's spinning. Um, and so, you know, just really getting him in there, you know, getting him in with meetings um, and just getting him comfortable with where he's at. Are there any differences this year now that there's just a lot more veterans around, guys experienced in the league versus you know, the mindset going into, into last season with a different kind of makeup roster? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, we have guys that have a lot of experience. Um, you know, I can't really touch on that too much just because I was only here last year and only saw what it was, um, where there, you know, guys have been in the league for a while, have been on multiple teams and seen different things. Um, but, you know, for us, it, you know, I don't think the, the message has changed other than to get better every single day. Um, you know, that's just our goal is when we come out here is just to work and get better. Guys, I know you were talking about working on footwork and making sure that you got the guys in the offseason. How have you kind of seen that pay off as you've gotten out of the last couple days? One more time, I'm sorry. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? If, uh, you talk about how you were uh, working on footwork and um, um, just getting with the guys in the offseason. Mm -hmm. um, how have you seen it kind of pay off as you've been out here? Yeah, um, obviously, you know, just the connections. Um, just, you know, being where they need to be and, you know, I'm putting the ball where it needs to be on time. Um, you know, for, for all those guys that, you know, worked out with me this past offseason, it's been great. Um, just having that extra connection, you just see that, that slight little step that, you know, there's just a head above the defense. Um, and so, you know, it'll continue to build throughout this entire offseason um, with, you know, every single guy from, you know, who might be a starter to, you know, who guys who came in on a rookie minicamp deal, whatever it may have been, uh, just working with all the guys just to get a connection. What's your goal during OTAs? Like I said, our goal not only for myself but everyone on the team is to get better every single day. Um, you know, for me today, it was just stay balanced on my shoulders, um, not have too much weight on my back foot, and just stay balanced on my feet and base. Um, and, you know, tomorrow could be something new. Um, and so for all of us, not only myself, it's just about getting better every single day. If you could pick out one thing that you think would the most determine your success this year, every day. Yeah, um, I, you know, I, that's a great question. But I think it's uh, just staying within the offense, you know, never trying to do too much. Um, whether it's, you know, it's myself or anyone else, you know, we, we got 11 or 10 other guys around us on the field. Um, you know, one guy can't make every play. So, you know, just letting the guys work around me. Um, trusting and having the respect of every other guy out there that you know they know and I know that we're all going to work together to, to to execute the goal. Yeah, I know you had only four starts last year, but I'm sure you took out a lot through those four starts. What did you take most out of it? What did you do more about this? Uh, that you know I could be here. Um, that you know I'm able to play this game at a high level, um, and so you know that was my biggest thing was, was just going out there and proving that you know I deserve to be here. Was it the improvement from week to week that you did that? Of course, yeah. Um, just, you know, improvement week to week and then just, you know, throughout the game, just how the game went, just feeling the game. Uh, but, yeah. They talk about the colors kind of slowing down, things slowing down. Is that kind of how you felt when you came back? Yeah, I mean, obviously, the more you play, like I said, you know, the difference between this year and last year, obviously, is a, is a tremendous night and day difference. Um, you know, it doesn't do as, as much, obviously, game to game. It does a little bit, but obviously not game to game, um, more so at season to season. Being, you know, Asian American Heritage Month, what's it like to have a community that embraces you the way they have here in Atlanta? Oh, it means the world. I mean, ever since I've been here, it's been uh, very welcoming, and um, you know, I'm just grateful for all the support. A lot of uh, Asian American kids may not think football is for them, but they see you, and obviously, you've made a tremendous career not only here but at Georgia Southern. What is it for you? What is it like to be kind of an inspiration for kids like that? Oh, it's awesome. It's uh, it's an honor to represent and actually, you know, give kids the next generation you know just kind of like visually for me growing up like there was you know I didn't really look at you know Asians like playing football in the NFL on Sundays or anything like that so um, to give that hope and just at least open the door that's that's awesome and it's an honor. Looking at the roster obviously a kind of a number change so was uh, was there any discussion or fun to exchange to give seven to, to Bijan did he have to do anything for the draft to get number seven? Uh, Bijan actually FaceTimed me and I was like yeah of course you can have it you know um, We'll uh, figure out something. I, you know, I was like, you don't have to pay me, man. We'll figure out something where um, choice of your 
charity will give it away something something like that but um you know i we all you know i didn't pay for it so it's like <laughs> you know it's all good in your position too in the nfl i mean 50 yard field goals are becoming more the regular ter- regular norm here the team's counted on youth for for games for game winning stuff like that do you work on you know extending your range a little bit like that uh, around this time of the year um no i you know my mindset is field goal, you know, 50 plus yard field goal or PAT is the same ball, so I'm not changing my swing necessarily. Um, it's kind of the same idea as a golf swing. You kind of let the club do its work, right? You keep the same swing, whether it's a pitching wedge or a six iron. That's the kind of the same mindset I try to have. And you and Tyler, obviously, you know, both Asian Americans kind of rep- do, representing football at the highest level. How cool is that to kind of share the roster with them? Oh, yeah, it's awesome. I mean, that's what, you know, what's so special about football locker rooms, right? It's just like everybody from different backgrounds, different places, and just get to, you know, work together towards the same goal and just kind of embrace all that. It's pretty special. Young way, a lot of new faces around here, both rookies and veterans coming in. What's the vibe? How would you describe it right now? Um, I mean, it's awesome. You know, energy's high. Everyone's working hard. And, you know, at this time, we're just trying to build every day and try to improve. And I think the energy is, you know, really good um you know i love love this team and uh just look forward to getting back here tomorrow and bringing work have you had any other interactions with Bijan other than the the number change facetime no that was the first time <laughs> but um yeah i love him yeah so um look forward to what he's gonna do and uh, i'm excited for him right. you go to six? Uh, i asked coach what was available and out of the numbers <laughs> i thought it was the best choice um <laughs> I saw 11, but I didn't, want, I didn't want to go from 7 to 11, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, I didn't want to touch that, so I just went with six. You know, I guess obviously your first thought when you see a running back pick number eight, what, do you, what are you thinking sitting at home? You, you know, excited. Yeah. You know, excited. I think uh, you know, the guys upstairs are doing doing it like do things for a reason, and um, bringing the right guy, right guy in here, you know, and it's just competition. That's really. That's what, like that's the name of the name the name of this game. Right. So you know, just competition. You know, we're excited excited for him to come in and it should be fun. Pre-draft or post-draft, did you have any conversations with them about you know now tell me what my role is in this situation or does does that not even happen? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't remember. I'm, I'm, I'm taking it day by day too. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not sure actually. What had what is your off season like? You know, rookies don't get much of an off season prior to that year. What yeah. was this off season like? Yeah, shoot, a lot of a lot of just train like take because like. Obviously, being on a schedule, you know, going from January, like rookie, my rookie right. January, combine training, boom, in season, like everything's just a schedule. So, like, really just taking the time off just, like, until, like, what was it, Super Bowl, Super Bowl week, just taking that time off just to really just gather all the injuries, gather or injury or just all the little knick knick mm-hmm. knicks and bruises right. and stuff sure. and uh, sure. just, like, getting those right and then just getting back at it and then just training and then, then now we're here with LTAs and stuff. How do you feel? good. Last year, it has to slow down for you. Oh, oh, hands down, yeah. Yeah, no, no, so fairly good. At the girls' flag event, you were talking about Bijan Robinson. You said thunder and lightning, but now that you guys have been on the same field, what is it like now? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, you know, it was good. I don't really say uh, a lot of nicknames yet. We'll wait till we get on the field and, you know, uh, get in the camp and then just uh, just being able to ball out. But we got, like, CP still, you know, every everyone, like Carlos. And then uh, we got a little Hunt. We got Duke still here. So, you know, it's uh, – now, whoever whoever's out there just balling, you know, everyone will get their chance to shine and stuff. So, you know, we're just excited to have the opportunity just to ball, have ball together. Noticed, I'm sorry. Have you noticed a change in leadership from Desmond, or is it something that was kind of naturally there last year, maybe just a little bit more emphasized this year? I would say he already had his confidence. I would say the confidence, but now it's just – he already had the like he already had the confidence last year, but now he's just he already has a year under a bell, you know, learn from Marcus and then um, shoot now he just he's just a natural born leader. That's what I think, you know, him coming in coming in last year, being with him in uh, in the apartments and stuff and then now now here, you know, it's a big step, but he already had the confidence, so you know, we're all confident behind him. What have you noticed differently? You say just you say you feel a difference over there even. What do you what do you see in terms of the way he carries himself? Yeah, just uh, like with the huddle. With the huddle, and then just um, there's like like a lot of people like try to rah rah and stuff, but like with him, it's just it's just natural. It just comes yeah. natural to him. So I think um, just boosting everyone, boosting everyone, boosting confidence with everyone. You know, it's good. How do you build on a thousand yard season? It was a very good rookie season. Where do you go up from there? So you just keep it, just keep going. One percent better every day. I think um, just taking it day by day. That's the biggest thing. You know, take what take what you learn. Just uh, being a sponge, really. Like I said last year, that was all. 
just still being a sponge, taking in all the information, and then just uh, just building upon that. It's just building blocks from here. Drake was talking a little bit about the idea of positionless football. It's something that Arthur Smith talks a lot about too. I mean, when you look at the collection of offensive weapons that you guys have put together this offseason, how excited does it kind of make you to be a part of that as well? Oh yeah, you know we have a lot, a lot of weapons, a lot of weapons. So I think. Um, to it. Should, should. It's all building. That's just building blocks too, you know. I think uh, get all get all the right people on the field, and then uh, just have all, everyone ball. You know, it's always nice to have obviously really great offensive line, and then having the weapons just give Desmond give Desmond choices. I think that's the biggest thing. Tyler, have, you, Tyler, have you had a chance to kind of think about what you accomplished last year? I know you know answered the question about over a thousand yards, but like to be the highest. As a for a rookie running back for the Atlanta Falcons, like, have you had a chance to reflect on that yet? Uh, I get that a lot. It was uh, it took a it took a while, it took a while, but I think um, just pat myself on back, like you actually did, like exceed expectation or a lot of unexpectations, whatever, whatever mm -hmm. it's called. But then, um, so now it's just building upon that, building upon that, you know, just aim for aim for that goal, but even better. So I remember really fun. We, coming in last year, you talking about just coming in and just you know doing your job, and now. Like, does that mindset change now that, you know, for your, based off your accomplishments and, like you said, with Bijan being coming in as well? And uh, also, um, Bijan talked about you, you know, when he got initially got drafted, he was just like, yeah, Tyler, Algier is a beast. Like, so how is it for him to be drafted at eight and coming in and talking about, you know, you guys' relationship and what you, doing, you guys will be able to get? Oh, yeah, with him coming in, like, obviously, he, like, number eight, really, really great pick. But uh, him coming in, being that all-around back, you know, just uh, being out of the back, out of the backfield, like wherever, wherever he needs to be on the field. But like he said, he always said that like he's trying to learn from me, but really I'm learning from him because him being an all-around back, that's my goal. Be all-around back, you know. Obviously, protection, 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 protecting the quarterback, running the ball, obviously, and then just being a threat in the backfield. Obviously, I'm still striving to be that. So really having him, just having us compete with that, it's good. So there's a lot of weapons on this offense in the offseason when different pieces are getting added, a lot of veteran presence too on this offense now. I'm curious what's going through your mind. Is it a little bit of excitement? You know, what's the what's the feeling? Oh yeah, no, it's like excitement for sure. I think uh, really just building all that chemistry. Chemistry is probably the biggest thing, you know, because obviously everyone comes from different backgrounds, and but all, when we're all here together, we're a team, and then just building that chemistry and then just balling out on the field, you know, we're excited. Is that kind of the goal of OTs for you specifically, is like getting that chemistry and kind of in year two getting more comfortable? Oh, no, I, I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. To, to the end of, you know, people coming back together and everything, I mean, this offensive line you know, comes back pretty much at full strength to what it was last year. I mean, how much does that mean for you guys in the run game, just like already having something really good established? Yeah, cause I think uh, they set the foundation last year. They set the foundation, and then um, really just building upon that. Like obviously, obviously we did great, great running the ball last year, but we can do we can do better, and that's just on my my standpoint as well. Or like with me, with me going to the O line. So like obviously everything, like we, we don't want to be we're not comfortable. So we're always striving to be great. So I think that's the biggest thing. When you think about yourself, obviously going into year two, what sort of uh, game do you want to have? Uh, uh, honestly, just to stack wins. Um, I wouldn't say anything personal right now for me, but as a team, as a collective, I think we want to win as much as we possibly can. There's obviously some new receivers around. How good has it been to get some work in with them, and what are your first impressions? Amazing. Um, Mac, Scotty, Red, Frank, all the boys is, is all there. So, I mean, We've all gelled together well as a, as, a, as a unit right now, and I'm excited to keep on working with them. It's early, but how do you make that connection so quickly? I think it's just the man that Arthur Smith, uh, yeah, Coach Arthur Smith brings in here. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't want to mix him up with blank. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, but it's just the type of men that he brings in here. We all have the same sort of mindset and uh, mentality, and I think that it just meshes really well in our room especially. This is a team collectively that is pretty young, but there's obviously veterans all over the place on both sides of the ball that have a lot of years of experience in this league. How much can that help? It can help tremendously on all levels of the game, you know, just having somebody who's been in here, got their feet wet, um, and just understands what it takes to, to be great at the sport, you know. Have you found yourself picking anybody's brain so nah, far? Everybody, I can, everybody in here, I could pick pick their brain and, and figure something out, you know, or, or learn something from them. So every day is a learning curve for me. I wanted to ask you about Clark Phillips. Uh, what are your, what do you remember about going up against him? And, and 
school. <laughs> and just what do you think about him in general? Have, have you gone up against him? Nah, he's a great guy. Like I said, like Coach Arthur Smith, <laughs> he brings in great guys, and he's competitive as hell, you know? Um, obviously, we had our battles. We had our matchup. Um, not going to go into that. Uh, <laughs> He has something to say about it, huh? just to let you know. He did that, that's fine with me. We're, we're past all that, you know. Um, nah, but I'm happy he's on the team and um, and to get more work with him and keep on iron sharp and iron, you know. Drake, you talked about how, you know, the wide receivers coming in. Just from a, a personnel standpoint, Cordell Patterson, B.J. Robinson, Tyler Ajir, Mac, you know, yourself, and uh, Kyle Pitts, like what are some of your goals as a, a as an offense coming into this season? Positionless football, um, you're not going to really know where anybody's going to be lining up, you know. Um, be aggressive and be explosive. I always like to mess with, uh, with Art Smith saying like he's a formation specialist. Like, do you feel like he's going to be sitting on the toilet coming up with plays, designing plays? <laughs> Probably sitting somewhere coming up with plays. I don't know about <laughs> that. Um, but, yeah, he's definitely going to be, you know, dialing up stuff for, for, for everybody. Um, and like I said, it's just positionless football. Coach Smith said he thought that you and Kyle could pass some stuff down to Bijan in terms of coming in as a top ten pick and how to handle that process. What would that be for you if you could if, to, to help him along through that? Shoot, from what I've seen so far from Bijan, I mean, level-headed kid, very, very humble. He works hard. He don't say much. So already right now he's on a great path with um, what, what Coach Smith has done with Kyle and me, you know. Um, so just keep him on the right path, and he's going to do great. I know you didn't have much of an offseason. What did you do with your first real offseason? Went back to some sunshine in Cali, good weather, um, and just relaxed, you know. Kind of like digested everything that just happened in my life for the past year. Um, understand what happened, and then just go forth from there. Feel pressure physically, maybe? Oh, yeah, way more comfortable. Um, and just honestly, just understanding what I have to do to get better from now on. How much is this second year so far kind of a breath of fresh air for you? the biggest breath of fresh air you could ever think of. Um, no, it's, it's been really good to, to sit back, like I said, digest everything, understand what's going on, and, and, and just get better at whatever I need to get better to keep elevating this team and myself. There, there are a lot of Falcons fans who, with the addition of Dijon, so Kyle and the offensive line are dreaming what this offense will look like. What do you think it'll look like? Uh, like I said before, explosive. Yep. How tough is that going to be on opposing defenses? And do you think about, hey, that it's going to be hard for anybody to key in on one guy? Yeah, that's that's the whole thing. Like I said, positionless football. Um, you're not going to know where any of us are at. You're going to have to try to find us. Um, and we're just going to go out there and play our play our style of ball, which is aggressive and physical. We're going to want to hear from you. It's a very famous name here in Atlanta. What, what is it like to, to be in this city that your family means so much to and I know means so much to your family? Uh, it's humbling. Uh, as soon as I got down here, I've had people uh, message me on Instagram, Twitter, or whatever avenue, and uh, sometimes even email. Just ask me about my granddad, and uh, I would say it's humbling. I've been dealing with it my whole life, so it's, I'm kind of used to it, but uh, I appreciate being in Atlanta. It, it's, a, it's a cool experience. You're going to get to you know, be around Arthur Blank, a lot of big folks from the, the city. Is it you know, interesting to hear other folks' memories and impressions of your grandfather? I know you've been hearing stories since you were you know, one year old. Yeah, being in other places, uh, I've, I've kind of came across a couple people that knew my granddad or had stories about my, my grandparents or uh, even my, my dad, in fact. But uh, being in Atlanta, you see a lot, of, um, a lot of the older generation that might recognize a name that had different stories that I've never heard. And uh, it's pretty cool that uh, they can, I can experience that and uh, I can share those stories that my, even my family may not know. Has uh, you know, I can call it. Um, has uh, you know the we are and, and Falcons fans are just starting to learn about you. Does civil rights or social justice or these things that are important to you? Is it something you've tried to stay involved with, lend your voice to, you know, throughout your life? Mm -hmm, definitely. Um, my passion is actually uh, helping the homeless and the houseless people. So I try to dig into that as much as I can uh, with my mother's foundation and my father's foundation. So I try, but uh, in the off season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I imagine a lot of that work happens in Atlanta or has in the past, is that right? Yeah, Atlanta. Um, and then I was in Birmingham okay. playing in the USFL, so I was able to reach out a little bit out there. But like I said, it was during the season, so I wasn't able to do much. How do you describe your football journey to this point? Uh, <laughs> ups and downs, I would say. But uh, mostly good things, I would say. Um, it's an experience. Football is, uh, is a tough sport mentally and physically. And for me, I just try to stick to it. I got that from my granddad. Mm -hmm. um, my grandparents in general, but just sticking to it and trying to be the best as I can every day, not worrying about what's around you or who's in front of you or things like that. 
Is there one particular story of, of your grandfather or your parents that, that, you know, give you that stick to it, you know, that, that ability? Definitely. So um, a lot of people don't know my parents and, or, sorry, my grandparents were actually living in Alabama uh, before they moved to Atlanta. And the reason they moved to Atlanta is because their house was bombed. And uh, my grandmother was in the house pregnant with her second child. Uh, that's my Aunt Donzele, who currently is an actress in L.A. And um, they didn't give up. So that's kind of what stuck with me through my life and through my football journey is not giving up whether I was in the NFL or in a different league. So I say I'll take that with me every day. Last question I got, and I appreciate you answering all these questions, is you know, you've shown you can play at this level. Obviously, you've played at other levels too. What is it going to take for you to, to get to that point where you're here regularly, a regular contributor, to, to take that next step? Just harder work. Uh, I showed that I can play here, but I haven't showed um, that I can play here consistently. I was on practice squad last year, and that's just, I feel like my floor, I feel like I can do a lot more than that. And I'm just trying to prove that every day. Like so far with Ryan Nielsen. It's been great, obviously learning a new scheme. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's in, you know, full learning mode and get out here and implement some, some defense and um, get back to some realish football. Feels great. So it's been it's been awesome so far. What were your first impressions of him, especially when he is talking scheme and, and going through some stuff with you guys? Yeah, obviously a great football mind. Um, trying to pick up and learn from him as much as he can. Very detailed and dialed in what he's what he's asking us to do. Has answers to the questions that we we ask of him. And um, yeah, it's been good. We were talking to Drake about how. The jump from year one to year two, it's kind of a breath of fresh air. Do you feel that a lot more comfortable heading into the second year? Yeah, I think for sure. You, um, I guess, know what to expect every every day. You know what practice is going to look like. You know you know the guys in the locker room and your way around the building. Um, so it's definitely more comfortable. Coach Nielsen said that y'all had several conversations shortly after he was hired. I wonder who initiated that. Did you reach out to him? Did, did your phone ring one day and it was him? How'd that happen? Yeah, my, my phone rang and it was Coach. Um, obviously good to, good to talk to him right, right after he took the job. I'm um, just starting to build a relationship and get to know each other before you get on the football field. We have a personal relationship with the coaches in the court and he was he reached out and he was awesome. So that was more about just getting to know you and not you didn't start asking him scheme questions and fit questions right out of the gate? Well, I, I asked him a little <laughs> bit, but he was, he's like, well, just get to know each other and we'll get to football when, when we need to. And, you know, I appreciate that. What are your impressions of Kate? Caden? Yeah. Oh, Caden's awesome. He's awesome to work with, super knowledgeable, has been in this scheme, so right. um, great person to have around in the room to, to bounce things off of. And he's just a tremendous human being, you know, to be able to hang out with him and learn from him, um, get to know him has been fun. Do you foresee a situation where y'all are where y'all are interchangeable basically and positionally you think, or do you see two distinct roles? You're one thing and he's another. I mean, do you know uh, yet? I mean we we're just we're just putting in the, the beginning of it. Yeah. Um, but we wanna be versatile, we wanna know each we always obviously have to know what each other are doing. Um, so in that sense I guess you could say interchangeable, but you know, everybody can play everything and we're just trying to to learn right now. Yeah, Troy, um, how comfortable are you this year uh, from, you know, last year going into OTAs and phase three of the program this year? I think definitely more comfortable. Like I said, it's, uh, um, you know the people, you know the place a little bit more, and now it's it's real football a little bit earlier. Um, so it's uh, it's been good so far, and it's been fun to get out on the field. And uh, what were your major takeaways from your rookie season? Man, I guess so many lessons. <laughs> um it's you know it's National Football League and everybody's so talented and you're not going to win every play, um, so you have to you know understand that you're not going to be perfect, um, but it's just about trying to get better every day and win as many as you can, and then just continue to learning. And what's the vibe with all of the new players that you all brought in on that side of the ball, and as you all are trying to learn each other here? Oh, it's it's been great so far. Obviously, you brought in brought in some really good talent that we're excited to, to have on our, our side of the ball. And then, I mean, the offense as well. Um, whole team's gelling really well and trying to get it going. Troy, following up on what d just said, we just got the first chance to talk to Calais. I know he's in a different position group, but he's got a pretty crazy resume. I mean, what, what does he bring on and off the field? Oh, I mean, just a, a great human being. Obviously, year 16 is, is crazy in the National Football League. Um, and one of the biggest humans I've ever seen so he's gonna hopefully hopefully do really good things for us we're excited to have him
Going back to Caden really quickly, I mean, how much of it is an asset to have him around? Just for you as, you know, Ryan Nielsen comes in and you talk about, you know, Caden being a good guy, someone you can work with. I mean, how much of that even early is a really important partnership for you? Yeah, it's, it's great just to be able to ask him um, how he views things and how he sees things in the defense, uh, try to pick up, you know, little nuances from him. Um, yeah, it's, it's been tremendous so far. He's another coach on the field, so it's good. You talked about how, you know, you learned a lot of things from your last year in your rookie season. Is there anything specific that you can use that take the carry over to this season to kind of help you out as far as inform the development standpoint? Yeah, I mean, I think you just try to take over everything you learned from last year. You know, how offenses work in the NFL and what, what certain formations bring, what certain type of players, um, what different teams run scheme-wise. Just try to take it over and, and continue to learn. Is there any problem? being that you were speaking of scheme, you're talking about Ryan Nielsen, you know, having different different scheme than last year than Dean Pease. Like, are there any similarities or anything that you can carry over from that, from what you all run ran last year? Yeah, I mean there's there's always there's only so many different defenses that you can run. Um, so there's there is certainly carryover, but there's a few tweaks. Um, yeah, we're we're all trying to pick up and learn and, and implement it out on the field. Looks like you gained some weight, man. You put on some weight this off season? I think I'm, I don't think I'm about the same. About the same? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Representing FCS, being an FCS guy, you know, Bijan comes from Texas, a bunch of these guys from big names, just representing Montana State, a bunch of guys at the FCS are doing well at this level. Yeah, it's it's fun. Um, I know Caden was uh, another Big Sky guy, and we have a, we have a few of them around the building, and yeah, it's fun.